What if the Ottomans never existed? Today we're going to take a look at that in Europa Universalis IV. I replaced the Ottomans with the Byzantines, the Eastern Roman Empire, giving them borders roughly what they would have looked like at the turn of the 9th century. I'm sure that there are many Romaboos that will be very excited to see this video, and I'm also sure that there's going to be some Turks that are not so excited to see this video, but I want you guys to know, you're all cool with me. This is just a game, so don't take it too serious. So I did my best. These borders should be pretty close to about the 9th century. Forgive me for any discrepancies, guys. The EU4 provincial system is not perfect, but I did what I could. Let's go ahead and speed five and uh, unpause. But before we unpause, what do you guys expect? Without the Ottomans, it could be anybody's game. Generally, whenever the Ottomans collapse, you'll get like a strong Mamlux or something like that. But this time we have a strong Byzantium. And you have to remember that they've got a pretty extensive mission tree from the Purple Phoenix DLC. So uh, we might be seeing some interesting stuff going on with them. And again, I always do this, but uh, New World natives have been destroyed because they're annoying and their federations give me actual brain cancer. We've got our first war here with Byzantium against QQ. They're actually attacking AQ for some conquest, so we'll see how that goes with them. I also forgot to mention this in the beginning, but these three guys are their subjects, uh, just to show that there was a little bit more autonomy in the Balkan region in this time. <laughs> oh yeah, Byzantium and its vassal swarm definitely has some forces in the field. They are the number two great power and leading number three by quite a lot, so we'll see exactly how that goes. They took quite a bit of land over here, and it looks like their missions gave them quite a few claims over here on the Mamluks. How nuts would it be to just see Byzantium just slowly start creeping through here? They've got claims on Naples, they've got claims over here. Like, if the AI is capable of building up enough men and landing men, that would be crazy. Also, it's kind of funny, this sea tile is technically a core of theirs because I typed the wrong number in the console when I was giving them the land, so ignore that, it actually won't affect anything. Though it does help with name placement, I think, but uh, I could be wrong. Also, in the spirit of just making things more interesting for them, I gave them Orthodox in all of their core provinces, and then I culture converted a couple of the coasts to Greek just to make it a little more interesting. Uh, I understand that culture is very hard to show on a map like this, but this is just something to make it a little more interesting for them. And the fact that they're stacking up their Patriarch Authority as quickly as they have been, um, that's a pretty good sign for them that they're going to be very, very strong. Goodness gracious, Byzantium is not wasting any time attacking the Mamluks and uh, invading them while they still have some cores going over here. Okay, yeah, Byzantium, they're going ham. Byzantium is going very, very hard right now. They integrated Croatia and then ate like three quarters of Hungary. They basically full annexed Naples. They've got claims on all of this land over here and they're all the way down bordering Cairo with a claim on it. And to add to that, they lost their ruling dynasty, and now they have Aurorikovich on their throne. I have no idea what the implications of this are going to be, but if we see a Russian PU or something crazy like that, I'm just going to lose my mind. Yeah, like 27 years in, and uh, Byzantium is the number one great power, overtaking Ming. Though France and Castile are growing quite quickly, and once they start colonizing, I reckon it's going to go much better for them. So as much as you might want to say that Byzantium is snowballing, I think we're going to see some interesting stuff in the later parts of the game. Right now, they're essentially unopposed, and they can kind of do whatever they want, which makes sense because they're huge and they have a big army. But as the other people start getting an economic base, I think things are going to be a little more interesting. And it looks like Byzantium got a little too big for its britches. Got a bit of a coalition. Austria, as well as a couple of people from Italy, have joined the coalition, as well as the Great Horde, as well as a couple of tags from Caucasia, as well as the Mashriq region. But if you can believe it, we're 30 years in and they have taken Cairo. Kind of nuts. Kind of nuts. The Reformation is here and is it in full swing? All three of the Protestant centers have spawned and they are spreading quite quickly in northern Germany. They've got a decent spread. Looks like most of this area will be converted, weaken the empire pretty strongly. And meanwhile, Byzantium having a game. Consolidated most of the boot of Italy and almost all of Egypt all the way down to Mecca. This is what the religious map mode looks like right now in 1565. And this is what the League War looks like in 1565. Protestants have quite a few notable members, including Russia, Byzantium, as well as France. And the numbers certainly reflect that with many, many more men on the Protestant side. And at this point, Byzantium is actually allied to Russia, so good on them. Oh yeah, war score from battles has definitely given them an edge. They don't even have the ticking war score that high, and they're at 95, so it looks like the Protestants are going to enforce their demands. But the AI gonna AI, and they are on high enthusiasm, feeling very good about this war. And there it is, the Protestant Roman Empire, leaving Ingolstadt, Munich, Bregenz, and Lübeck as the electors. Safe to say they're not going to be passing any reforms, so that's GG for the HRE. 
So it certainly looks like we've got a little bit of a East versus West Roman Empire here. Only Spain is the West this time around. Spain actually has a personal union here on Naples as well, who somehow was released from Byzantium. And after the League War is over, Spain is number one, but it's only because Byzantium has not embraced the institution yet. And with the Commonwealth, 450 points behind Spain. Russia is also up there as well as France. So it looks like there's quite a few contenders in Europe looking to uh, fight for that number one spot. Oh my goodness, I am glad I looked at the computer when I did. Can you guys guess what this war is between Russia, Byzantium, and the Commonwealth? Can you guess? Because if you would have guessed a succession war for the Russian throne, then you would indeed be correct. Obviously, Byzantium is ruling the Commonwealth, and Russia has really high opinion of them, so it looks like they are going to be a nice, loyal subject for Byzantium. Second Rome and Third Rome ruled by the same crown. Kind of nuts to think about. Out east, we're seeing a little bit of something, something. We got a big old Manchu and a big old Mughals. I always appreciated AI Mughals. I think I said that in my last video. Definitely still true. Ming absolutely collapsing and popping out every single little tag down here in southern China that it possibly could. New World's a bit of a mixed bag. We've got England, Spain, and Portugal in South America. In North America, more Portugal, Spain, England, and another one over here, which I appreciate. We have Holland, who has been exiled to New England. <laughs> And then we have the New Netherlands, who is a subject of, you guessed it, the Netherlands, who has been exiled to Dominica, Dominica? I don't know how that's pronounced. I think it's Dominica. But uh, yeah, a bunch of exiles going on over here, and I am here for it. I think that's hilarious, and I love when people get exiled. Like, I remember series where the Pope would get exiled to random provinces on the coast of West Africa and stuff like that. Super funny. Like, I live for things like that. Now, I know that it's kind of like a joke among the Paradox community that you can always find penises in the map in Paradox games, but man... This really, really does kind of look like some balls. I'm not going to lie, but maybe it's a heart and I just have a dirty mind. I don't know, man. But Spain is not slowing down. They're actually beating the tar out of France right now. So we'll see how things go with that. They are definitely Byzantium's main nemesis at the moment. And the Mughals and Manchu over here doing quite well in their own right. I feel like you don't usually see a Manchu down in southern China, so I'm pretty cool with that. And while we're on that topic, I feel like you don't usually see Mughals get all the way into China, so that's pretty cool as well. Well, my friends... It happened. Byzantium integrated Russia. And I don't know whether I should be excited, scared, aroused, all of the above. It appears that the revolution has spawned here in Brandenburg, and the Spanish have embraced it. Great power race, very much still neck and neck between Byzantium and revolutionary Spain. But look at Manchu popping off over here. I respect that. The New World has essentially been finished up between Portugal and Spain over here and Spain and Portugal over here. With this one Mayan nation just taking up most of Mexico, I respect it. And in the aftermath, Byzantium hasn't changed a whole lot in roughly the last hundred years or so. Spain grew into France a little bit, and I kind of appreciate that Brandenburg was going for more or less modern day German borders. Venice absolutely went ham, as did Savoy. But if we were to unpause, Savoy would get a big munch taken out of them by Spain. No surprise there, mostly considering that Spain ended up becoming the number one great power and by a decent amount, as well as military hegemon giving them some very serious modifiers. Not to be scoffed at though, Byzantium did finish with a respectable 4400 development with the Commonwealth right behind them, Manchu, Mughals, and then Savoy. Manchu and the Mughals didn't do a whole lot, looks like they kind of straightened out their borders with each other, but aside from that they didn't really change a whole lot. Congo went pretty hard over here in Africa, and I respect that a lot. Ethiopia at one point had a bunch of land over here as well, so it looks like they actually got clamped and uh, released a bit of their territory. I have to say I appreciate the Mughal Horn of Africa. Though this Mayan nation actually pomped off and ended up becoming the major power in this area, this Mexican nation is like Mexico before the Mexican-American War, before the Civil War. So there's a little bit of history for you guys. Spain went down under and settled Australia. But I will say this, I feel like New Zealand gets left alone by the AI like basically every game. I feel like I never see them fully colonized. Taking a look at the religious map mode, I do not see a Protestant province in the entire world, which is kind of nuts. We've got Anglican, Reformed, Catholic of course over here, and then Orthodox. All in places that make sense. Congo down here, taking pictures of people's feet in public and good old Mayan North America, right? If you guys enjoyed that video, please do make sure you leave a like on the video. That sort of feedback is really important for letting me know what the audience wants to see, and I want to make what you guys want to see.
If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll get notified whenever we upload new videos, which is twice per week. If you're looking for some cool community, you can support me on Patreon, like I said in the beginning. For as little as $5 a month, you'll get early access to every single video that I post here, usually about a week early. And it also goes a long way towards letting me make this content for you guys full time. If you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, or my Twitter, you can check those all out linked in the description. And until next time, stay chill.